Okay, welcome back. Um, we are going to be building on yesterday's lesson, which involved what? Yesterday we looked at solving inequalities. Um, but we looked at solving inequalities that involved addition or subtraction. And we had said, remember earlier in the year, we solved equations and um, solving inequalities is almost exactly the same as solving equations. How so? You use inverse operations, so you undo the inequality. You do whatever you do to the left side, to the right side, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we looked at some examples. Um, so today we're going to be looking at multiplication and division inequalities. Um, this is a two-day lesson. Today is a little bit easier to grasp. Tomorrow is not much more difficult, but it's a little bit different. Either way, um, this this is going to be a two-day lesson. So. Um, today I'm going to go through four example problems to go over just how to solve an inequality using multiplication or division as an inverse operation, and then we're going to give it a little bit of a twist tomorrow. But for today, our first example that we're going to do, I'll write it out for you. We're going to do x divided by 5 is less than 2. So since I have division as my operation here, the inverse of that is to multiply by 5. And inverse operations cancel out. Whatever you do to the left, you do to the right. So I'm going to multiply by 5 over here. And what's left here is x is less than 10. <clears throat> and um, we can test that out and prove it a little bit easier visually by graphing it. So I'm going to graph 10, and then I'm going to put a couple numbers above and below it on my number line. And uh, I know it's gonna be an open circle because it doesn't say equal to, so 10 is not part of the solution set. But what numbers are part of the solution set, x is less than, so all of the numbers that are less than 10. So my arrow is gonna to point to the left. And we can take a couple numbers to test that. We could say, um, for example, over on this side of the inequality would be the number 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1, and 1 is less than 2. So I know that everything to the left is going to work out. And then if you pick something up here, let's say we picked 15, because that would be somewhere on this side of the number line. Um, 15 divided by 5 is 3. 3 is not less than 2. So I know that my solutions are, in fact, anything less than 10 on this side of the number line. Okay, let's go to our next example problem. Uh, for this one, we're gonna be looking at the inequality 4n is greater than or equal to 32. And since it's 4n, that's multiplication, that's four times n. So my inverse is to divide by four and divide by four. And what's left over is 32 divided by 4 is 8. So I know that in this inequality, whatever n is, it needs to be greater than or equal to 8, and it will make this inequality true. And we can show that on a number line. So 8 is our number. And a little bit sloppy, but that's okay. Um, we're going to be using a closed circle this time because it's less, uh, excuse me, greater than or equal to. The equal to part of the answer is what makes it a filled in circle. Eight is one of the solutions, as well as all of the numbers greater than eight. And that makes sense, right? If I plugged in eight, four times eight is 32, that's equal to 32, that makes this true. If I chose nine, nine times four is 36, that's greater than, that makes it true, as will every number greater than that. So um, that's definitely our solution set. So really, this is just like solving equations. You're just using inverse operations. Nothing, nothing really too challenging here. Uh, third example, let's look at 2 times x divided by 3 is less than or equal to 4. So you have a couple options here. You could do this in multiple steps. You could multiply by 3 to get rid of the divide by 3. So then you'd multiply by three on the right side. And then you'd have a new equation. I'll actually, I'll work it out so you can see it. So you could do times three times three, and that would give you 
2x and on this side we'd have 12 and then you could divide by 2 because that's the inverse of 2 times x and divide by 2 and you'd have x is less than or equal to 6 and that is totally the correct solution but alternatively let's look at this problem another way um, some of you might have thought this from the get-go but a good alternative is when you see a problem written in this form um, you could treat the 2 and the 3 as a fraction you could treat this as if it were 2 thirds um, times x and if you treated this as a fraction then the um, way to inverse this would be to divide by 2 thirds or in other words when you divide by a fraction you multiply by the reciprocal. So you could knock this thing out in one step if you multiplied by 3 over 2 because the 2's would cross cancel, the 3's would cross cancel and then that would leave x on the left hand side of the equation and then I'd multiply over here by the same thing by 3 over 2. And so I'd have uh, x is less than or equal to 12 over 2 which is the same thing as saying x is less than or equal to 6 which is the same thing I got the first time I solved this inequality. Uh, I just looked at it a little bit differently. Um, it's good to start seeing things like this. This will save you time in the long run, especially as you go higher up in math and you start to see um, longer, more complex equations. Wherever you can save time, you want to save time. Either way, um, no matter if you solved it the way I did on, on this side of the screen or on this side of the screen, as long as you do it properly, you will yield the same answer. But it's, uh, it's maybe a bit of a time saver to do it this way, using a reciprocal, um, th treating that as two thirds and multiplying it by the reciprocal. Either way, I just wanted to point that out in one of our examples today. And our last example, we're gonna be looking at a word problem similar to the way that we ended yesterday's lesson. So uh, this word problem reads, a one-way bus ride costs $1.75. A 30-day bus pass on the other hand, costs $42. So the ultimate question is, at what point will it be a better deal to purchase a 30-day pass? Um, I'm going to treat my first step as writing things out in words, like what is happening in terms of um, like a word version of the equation, I mean the inequality. So I'm going to write that out and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so um, I wrote this out. On the left side of the inequality, you have the cost of a one-way ticket multiplied by the number of one-way tickets that you, you would need. And this question is asking, when will this, the 30-day bus pass, be a better deal than this? Another way of thinking about that is, when will a 30-day bus pass be less than, so I want... The, the less than part of this pointing over here. When will this be less than this? Or when is this going to be more than, when is this gonna cost more than a 30 day bus pass? Because a 30 day bus pass will be a better deal at the point in time where this is more costly than this. So let's write what we know in words. We know the cost of a one way ride is a buck 75. And we're asking ourselves, how many rides is it going to take for this to cost more than this? We don't know the number of rides. That's what we're going to find. So that's our variable. And then we know the cost of a 30-day bus pass is $42. So um, $1.75x, when is $1.75 times some number of rides going to be costing more than $42? That'll tell us our magic number, the number of rides it's going to take for the bus pass to be a better deal. So to solve this, quite simple, it's a buck 75 times X, so we're gonna divide by a buck 75. And that's gonna leave us with when the number of rides is greater than 24. So when you are gonna take more than 24 rides on this bus, don't buy one-way tickets because you're going to end up spending more money than you need to. Anything over 24 rides, it's worth it for you to buy the 30-day bus pass. So if you're going to be commuting on this bus 
I don't know, all 30 days in a month, or if you maybe use it twice a day, I don't know. As long as you're taking more than 24 rides, the bus pass is gonna be a better deal because it's going to be less than the cost of buying uh, 24, 25, 30, however many uh, one-way ride tickets. So when you see a problem like this where it says, what's a better deal? What that's really saying is when is one thing costing less than the other thing? So I just set up both sides of my equation. This is thing one and this is thing two. And when is thing one greater than thing two? Um, hopefully that made sense. So today you've got some practice problems. I think there's like 10 or so. Uh, do your best, use this and ask questions and all the stuff that I usually say. And you know, have fun when you do it.